So yeah, in terms of like emergency equipment and first aid equipment to carry, as I said, when you do your, when you do your first aid training, the trainers I'm sure will go through things. I'm just gonna show you what I carry in my bag. I'm not saying that this is like a definite, definitive list of what you should carry. It really depends on your situation, depending on who you're with and the remoteness of where you are. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of carrying above and beyond what I need for a site like this because I work on multiple sites. So I would recommend that you keep it though in a marked bag rather than having it mixed up with your with the other you know kits and equipment that the kids might be playing with so so that everyone knows that this is like the emergency bag i like a red bag just because you know it's red like you know emergency kind of thing so keep it keep it separate and i'll show you what i've got in it so when i'm running forest school programs everyone knows that this is the emergency bag but I also control the access to this bag so only me and my helpers go in this bag because there is sort of sensitive confidential information in here such as like your medical forms for example we carry in here so you need to also control confidentiality in fact that's one that I should have perhaps added to the list of uh, the, uh, the handbook that confidentiality So I've actually got two first aid kits in here. Um, I've got one that is like a complete Uber mountain first aid kit kind of one. And then I've got one that I've made up myself that is full of just more sort of mundane day-to-day -day things like, you know, elastoplasts and wound wash and stuff that you're kind of going to use perhaps for the more um you know the more treatable first aid things and that's the first aid kit that i tend to use on a day-to-day -day basis and i tend to not try and use this too much um, so that if there was a major incident i know that that's a complete kit that i can just kind of grab and, and go so there's various bits and pieces in each of those first aid kits. So, so I also carry, as I said, people's medical forms, but I've also got an accident report book in here and I keep a copy of my risk assessments for like my emergency procedures so like the site specific emergency procedures so if i was calling an ambulance the information that i need to know the grid reference the what are three words thing the where to meet how to get there in fact look, you can have a look at that one if you would like with the information on it in fact i've got several have a look at that one to see this sort of information. So what you want to imagine is like, if you were the person who got knocked out, do your helpers know and have all the information they need to tell the emergency services if they're the ones calling for, calling for help? So it's got an abbreviated version of my first aid procedure at the top and the site specific stuff at the bottom. I also tend to uh, carry one of these like emergency bivy bags. It's basically like a big, thick plastic bag. But these are great. Well, they're great for many things, actually, including making really good sleds in the snow. But, um, but they're, they're, it's basically a big bag that should you need to keep somebody warm, like say someone's broken their leg, which isn't an urgent thing in terms of ambulances. Well, it depends on how serious. Imagine it's a, a minor fracture, but they can't walk out the woods. You're out there at winter, it gets dark at four o'clock and it gets cut, you know, sitting on the ground gets cold. You might need to keep them warm for, for you know, an hour or two even before the ambulance gets to you. So the idea is you get inside that bag. Um, I also carry 
a roll mat. I'm not going to get it out because I'll never get it back in the thing, but you know, a camping roll mat so that you can like sit on it or lay on it. You can improvise stretches. It's a bit minging. <laughs> it hasn't been out for a while. You can, Im you can imp improvise like stretches and things as well with these if you needed to. Um, um, yeah, often the first aid that you do like real life scenarios and stuff and like if you're like if you're the casualty and having to lie on the ground like you quickly feel how much heat you lose don't you out the back of it like on the or through the ground so having stuff like this to insulate people and the roll mat to insulate people can make a massive amount of difference to, to if you had to look after someone for a bit longer um, I do also keep like a few bits this is like a poncho, like a waterproof poncho. So a few spare bits of clothing. I mean, to be fair, you'd have to be pretty desperate to wear that fleece. <laughs> but if I was working with kids, I used to actually keep a whole spare duffel bag in the winter time of spare clothes because they never bring enough clothes in my experience. I've never had a single group where everyone's had enough clothes in the winter that I've always constantly spare gloves, hats, scarves, fleeces, jumpers, extra socks, like like a duffel bag, and that they could then just help themselves from. Um, so yeah, in the winter time, spare clothes is one of the main things. In this discreet little um, bag is my poo kit <laughs> for toileting. Like, so again, depending on where your site is, oh. Depending on where your site is, like some sites, obviously, like here, you just come back and there's a toilet. But um, in other sites, you might have to have wild wheeze and wild poos should the occasion arise. So it's important to have the right equipment. So we've got like a little trowel in there, some loo roll, some um, a fire kit, basically, uh, some anti back. Yeah, so. <laughs> In my understanding, it's best to deal with such stuff on site and not get involved in transporting it because obviously human waste is considered uh, you know, a hazardous material. You don't want to get into having to carry bags of poo around and stuff like that. So my procedure for pooing in the woods is to go dig a hole about a foot deep, somewhere discreet, obviously. If you're in a public place, <laughs> put up some tarp or screening area for a toilet area um, and then obviously do your business in the hole use the paper as you would normally but don't put that in the hole because it doesn't biodegrade and basically set fire to the paper afterwards so you burn all trace of it um, obviously depending on the age and the ability of the kids you may need to intervene and help them with various stages of, of, of that sort of process um, but yes and I guess that also throws into light, like safeguarding protocols and stuff as well that you would need to consider. But um, sometimes when you describe what they need to do, they go, it's all right, I can wait. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it can go the other way. Like the teenagers I used to work with, it was like it was their favourite forest school activity. It was almost like they saved it up. Like every week, can I have the poo kit? Can I have the poo kit? Like there would be a queue for the poo kit. Be like, happy days. Oh, and also do remember to mark where you've been, like with like a stick or something so that you don't dig it up, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, later, in a later activity. Um, it's all good fun. How do you deal with, like, looking to have two-year-olds out there, obviously a lot of them are going to be in nappies and all the rest of it. Is that a good... So you don't want to be laying them down, really, mm. if you can help it. As I understand it, it's, uh, I haven't worked directly myself with that age group um, in nappies, but as I understand it from the people like running the forest kindergartens, they'll have an, just like you would in a nursery, you'd have like an air, a designated area for nappy changing that um, might be under, like, might be under shelter, like maybe they've created like, or even like a pop-up tent or something potentially could be used as a discreet 
area. Again, if you're in somewhere with public access, you probably would want to, you know, you want that privacy. So, um, again, from a safeguarding point of view, as I understand it, the person on nappy duty needs to be in visual contact with the other people so that they're not in like a one-to-one -one situation away from anybody else because that could lead them open to being vulnerable for safeguarding things. So yeah, it's a combination of like balancing the privacy with the um, safeguarding side of things. Um, and then in terms of like the practicalities of the surfaces, like, well, like Bubba, I, change, I just usually throw a tarp down or something down on the ground to, to, to change her. So can be fairly easy if it's a bit wet it's a bit of a prolonged if it's wet you know you've got to get all the waterproofs off and everything so you probably want some sort of tarp shelter or pop-up tent or something i would think would be my suggestion um yes well so i do yeah we do also keep you know things like anti-back wet wipes they're always handy Keep a torch, again, thinking for winter time, if you were stuck out for a, for a prolonged period of time. Torch and a spare pair of batteries. <laughs> Got some Kendall mint cake. So basically some, some sort of food, um, high energy food. I used to keep like jelly babies in the bag, but then I would eat them. So <laughs> I don't like Kendall mint cake, so I've left it in the bag. But basically for people who are either uh, like diabetic and need a bit of a sugar bolst or um, like in early stages of hypothermia as well, having some sugar can, can help. Um, I heard a tip about ha having jelly cubes and like having those to hand for, for the same reason can be useful and you can melt them in hot water, which if it was winter time, I usually do carry a flask of hot water as well in the bag so that you can have instant hot water to warm people up if need be without faffing around with the fire. Although there is a fire kit in here. Um, so yeah, I always keep the fire kit. Um, Now, because I work with adults rather than kids, well, I do also have things like insect repellent and natural insect repellent and sun cream and that kind of thing, which, depending on your group, you may or may not provide for them. But there's a, you, know, you would need to know about any allergies uh, and get parental consent if you were providing those things but it, it, it depends on what site you're you're in but ideally you'd have the learners have their own insect repellent and stuff so that you know that that's okay for them to have but some, sometimes some sites can be really bitey you know can be swarmed with insects and you know having something like that to hand otherwise you might have to pack in your session sometimes it can be that bad in some sites um, I don't know if there's anything this is all fish yeah, um, yeah so there's things that are in my bag at the moment um, other things that you might see are like some of those survival shelters which are like um, they're like little miniature parachutes that you can kind of and get you know they can get them different sizes again so if you're like I think they're designed for like if you're up a mountain or something or up the hills and you need to you need to get warm you can kind of get a group of people like huddled in these emergency shelters um but at forest school i usually have tarps and stuff anyway so if i did need to rig an emergency shelter we could improvise something from the kit that we've got i'll always have clean drinking water as well to hand from a, from a forest school thing I, I, I carry quite a lot of the sterile waters in the first aid kits as well, because that's good for washing wounds, because you know you haven't got a tap at, out at Forest Schools, but having the sterile water is good. Um, what else might get carried? As I say, your first aid trainer will probably show you some other stuff. Uh, Sam splints, have you seen those? Sometimes people carry Sam splints. <laughs> um, they're like these firm strips that you can use to like 
basically they form a splint so like if somebody's broken something you can there or if someone's hurt got like a neck injury you can put it around their neck um, that sometimes gets carried if you're in a more remote place I don't know. but then you know depending on where you are if you're in the corner of the school playing field you probably could get away with you know your emergency procedures a first aid kit and some water some clean water it might be all that you need in that in that situation Thank mm -hmm. you.